What's going on guys, it's Dan and this is your Daily Prep. Guys, one of the best ways to purify water is by distilling it. Um, distilling, for those of you who don't know, is actually evap uh, heating up water to the point where it evaporates into gas and then taking that gas and cooling it back down. The reason for that, guys, is because it, it really does a good job of um, separating the contaminants and the pollutants from the water. Um, it, now, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna say that it does everything because there are some things that will actually distill with the water and then recondense. So it's not 100% you know, foolproof, but it's a pretty good way of purifying your water. So, if in a survival situation you find yourself needing to distill water, I thought I'd give you a quick little look at just a very simple, low cost, you know, low tech way that you can do that using some very cheap, inexpensive parts. So the first thing that you're gonna need is a glass bottle. This is just a soda bottle. You can use a beer bottle, anything. They're pretty standard in size, so I think a lot of them should work for you. The next thing is a piece of tubing. This tubing is a half inch on the inside and three quarters of an inch outside diameter. The three quarters of an inch outside diameter is what's important. So this little probably two foot section of tubing, I don't know, less than a dollar at any hardware store. Finally guys, you'll need something to catch the water as it recondenses. I'm just gonna use a little glass cup because I'm in my kitchen. We're out in a survival situation, you can use a camp cup or anything, I mean, any, any little Ziploc bag, anything that will hold water in it for you to drink. All right guys, so here's how I'm gonna do it. You can see I put a little bit of water down in there in that glass bottle. I'm gonna go ahead and just fire up this, this uh, front burner here. Now, were I in the willies or something like that, this would be substituted for a campfire, but again, um, and while I'm doing that, I'm gonna take this plastic tubing and I'm going to slip that inside the mouth of the bottle there. With a three quarter inch outer diameter plastic tubing, it fits pretty nicely inside this uh, bottle here. The one thing that you want to be careful of is this plastic tubing. Um, if it's directly over your heat source, it's going to start to melt. As it is, it should get pretty hot. Um, you can see my burner is kind of smoking already. But it will get pretty hot being inside this glass, but it won't actually melt um, over you know, a fire or a burner if you have the big portion of this on the outside, like not over a fire. All right, and you can see it is 450 right there on the oven clock as we're starting. So we'll keep an eye on this guy and uh, see exactly when we can get some condensation. All right, guys, so it's been 16 minutes now. You can see that this guy's still rapidly boiling. You can see that the uh, condensation evaporation, or excuse me, evaporation condensation cycle still going, still catching everything in my cup over here. Uh, this cup is very hot because it's full of steam, but I'll just kind of give you a quick little glance here if I can with one hand at exactly how much is in there. Here's a little bit in there. It's a very slow process when you're using um, kind of low heat for the glass bottle and the plastic tube. Um, you know, you could, you could crank up the output by cranking up the input, make the heat go higher, um, you know, add a little bit more water, spread it out over a bigger surface area, things like that. Essentially though, guys, that's kind of the technology in its very lowest form. So. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Hopefully that uh, gives you something fun. If you got kids, that's a great thing to try with them. Be safe, don't burn yourself up guys. And uh, as always, thanks for tuning in. I'm Dan and this has been your Daily Prep.